Okay, this video log, I'm going to talk about the first Seminole War. And I started out, I wanted to show you some of the books that are useful. Maybe you can get them in the library, or maybe you can still order them, get them from used bookstores. I've gotten a lot of my books from used bookstores, which is a great source because a lot of what I get are out of print. And the first Seminole War was more a of uh, outgrowth of the War of 1812. It was unfinished business that was left behind. The British, when they left New Orleans, they dumped a lot of their arms and even some of their soldiers off in Florida. There was the two forts on the Apalachicola River. There was the Nichols Fort or Apalachicola Fort, and that was near what they call Chattahoochee today. And there was the other fort that everybody knows about called Prospect Bluff or Negro Fort. Later, it was made into Fort Gaston, and that's on the south end of the river. So you have uh, Nichols Fort up in the north near the Georgia line. In fact, it's at uh, one mile south of Lake Seminole, which is the line between Georgia and Florida and Alabama's right on the other side. And then you have the uh, Prospect Bluff for Negro Fort on the south side, which is really the only high ground on the south side of the river that you can build anything. The shore along the river in the first part is pretty much down to sea level. And finally, you get to Prospect Bluff, calling it a bluff or a cliff or a hill is generous. Uh, the topographical maps have it 10 feet above sea level. So you get on top, and you're just kind of on embankment that looks down over the river. In fact, you can walk to the river's edge to the right of the fort. Anyway, some books I have on the subject. The first is called Florida Fiasco, and that was by, I think, Patrick Remmer. Rembert, Rembert Patrick, and this was printed in 1953, I believe, but it's a very good book about the Patriot War from, it says, Florida Fiasco, Rampant Rebels on the Georgia-Florida Border, 1810 to 1815. It's when the United States had several, uh, I guess you call them filibusters, coming down into Florida, wanting to add that to the the uh, new states, maybe there is an expedition from Georgia, then one from Tennessee, and the failure they met. But during that war, one of the big things was that destroyed Painstown, the big, large Seminole town on Alachua Prairie. And I might have to turn my background off for these next books here. Uh, Otherwise, I'm going to show the books and they'll all be the same as the background. And this one that came out about uh, this James Madison's phony war, uh, The Plot to Steal Florida by Joseph Perkholder Smith. This one's actually a, this is a used book I got, a library book. And this is a good one also on the Patriot War, similar to Florida Fiasco. And there's the other war of 1812 by James Cusick, the Patriot War and the American Invasion of Spanish Florida. Those three are really good on the Patriot War. Now, all the books I'm going to show are not all that's available. It's just what I have in my collection. That's, uh, and I think all of these are pretty good. Okay, Dale Cox, he's from a community called Two Egg in Jackson County, Florida. That's north of Mariana. And he's put out at least a dozen books. And I have five here are all on the Patriot War, First Seminole War. We have Nichols Outpost on the uh, British Ford on the Apalachicola River by south of Lake Seminole of the Chattahoochee. Nichols Outpost, and that came out kind of at the same time, we put a historical marker 
on the uh, site. The next we have the Fort at Prospect Bluff. This is actually a new one that came out at the uh, end of 2019 and one of Dale's Cox book. This is about the Negro Fort, Fort Prospect Bluff. And he's done more research than anyone else actually going into the British archives and getting names of the actual, uh, uh, I guess Maroons is one term they call them, the people at the court. Here's a book he came out with about five years ago, Millie Francis, The Life and Times of the Creek Pocahontas. The story of Millie Francis was that she saved the life of a soldier. There's a soldier, Duncan McCrimmon, who wandered away from camp at St. Mark's. And this was at the beginning of the first Seminole War. And some warriors capture him and go and put him to death. And she pleads for his life. Her father is Josiah Francis, a very important Creek uh, Seminole leader. And because of the actions that she saves the soldier's life, and he's uh, taken to trade it away at St. Mark's to the Spanish who give him back to the Americans. Because of Millie Francis's act, then that uh, she is awarded a congressional medal, which she receives around the time of her deathbed. And Jackson it takes uh, Jos or captures Josiah Francis, her father, and hangs him, executes him at St. Mark's. So it's a real tra tragic story. But it's interesting because she is one of the first uh, female figures in American lit literature that really made a popular uh, mark in the early American writing. Dale Cox did this book also about five years ago, The Scott Massacre of 1817. And the cover is a photograph of the actual site at Chattahoochee Landing on the Apalachicola River. And so that's kind of neat. That's a first examination. I'll talk more about the Scott Massacre in a minute on another book. And then the fifth book I have of Dale Cox is Fort Scott, Fort Hughes, and Camp Recovery, Three 19th Century Military Sites in Southwest Georgia. And this is right north of Chattahoochee. These are three related forts or camps. Uh, Fort Scott was a major military outpost established in 1816 as a reaction of the Americans trying to, uh, before they destroyed the Fort at Prospect Bluff. And that was the, the border fort. And then they had Camp Recovery, which was the hospital of that. And then there is Fort Hughes. When the Americans went from Fort Scott and attacked Fowltown and took away the cattle and sacked the Indian town, which was really the start of the First Seminole War, then Fort Hughes was a small stockade now in the city of Bainbridge. And there's a uh, cannon and historical markers in that area. And continuing on on the First Seminole War, at the same time Dale Cox came out with the one on uh, the Scott Massacre, John and Mary Lou Missile wrote Elizabeth's War, a novel of the First Seminole War. And this has actually gotten an award from the Florida Historical Society. I think it's the Patrick Smith Award or Patrick Remnant Award. Uh, maybe this, maybe I got this copy before, before that is marked in there. This is actually a historical novel based on the actual events. And it's very good because it's based on a lot of research that they did. They actually found all the names of the soldiers that were on the supply boat that the Indians attacked and killed all but about six of them, uh, or about five or six soldiers that jumped and swam for it. And Elizabeth Stewart, uh, Elizabeth Stewart was the Elizabeth who survived, and she was a prisoner for several months in the Indian camp and finally captured 
at the uh, Battle of Econfina during the First Seminole War. So I guess she was a prisoner for about five months. Okay. Not sure why I might have bought this off of Amazon. Speech of Henry Clay in the House Representatives of the U.S. on the Seminole War. I think this is a reprint of a government uh, congressional document. Henry Clay, the speech on the First Seminole War. That's if you're really into it. Okay, this next book is actually one of my favorites. It's Old Hickory's War by, or Old Hickory's War, Andrew Jackson, A Quest for Empire by David and Jean, Jean Heidler. And this really gets into the workings of the, what's going on behind the scenes, what one thing led to another from the War of 1812 to uh, Jackson ordering the destruction of the Fort at Prospect Bluff into the Seminole War, and you can see the progression as events go on until it causes Spain to give up Florida and cede it to the United States. And that, that's what's available pretty much for the first Seminole War. There's other books that I don't have yet, and there's a few books on the Seminole War overall that cover the first Seminole War. Here's Joe Kanish's Florida, Florida Seminole War. It's not a very big one, but it's good to give you an introduction. It's by Arcadia Press, who uh, has the Images of America books. So that, that's a really good one. That's been out, oh, I think uh, since about 2012, 2003. Oh, longer than that. Uh, and John and Mary Lou Missel, who wrote Elizabeth's War, they wrote a book, The Florida Seminole War, American's Longest Conflict. And that came out also in 2003. But they did a revised version of that that just came out. They had so much information, they had to totally rewrite the book. And they gave it a new name. It's called Seminole Struggle, A History of America's Longest Indian War by John and Mary Lou Missel. And that's well well worth it too and that's a really thick book if you really seriously want to learn about all three of the seminal wars in fact the first book on the third seminal war or the there is a major book is done about 1982 but i think it's james covington who did it and just wrote it in just a few weeks and for years, that was all we had on the Third Seminole War until John and Mary Lou researched it and came out with this. And then about two years ago, they came out with a book, The Third Seminole War, which I'll talk about that in our time. So that's it on major books about the First Seminole War. So it used to be a conflict not too many people knew about. So and now it's now it's known really well with a lot of this information out people are getting to understand what actually went along it's that the government knew full well what was happening jackson was not really surprising anybody by going down in florida because not only did he say what he would that's what he was going to do he was even suggested to do it by john calhoun who was the secretary of war so there's a lot of interesting history in that. Well, I think that's enough for now and have a good evening.